Welcome, come in. Don't be shy, come sit in front. Excellent, so let's get started. Welcome, and um, we are presenting today about being a better mentor. Um, so next to me is Erik. So Erik, uh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Erik Stielstra, online also known as uh, Soetagsan. I'm uh, currently a um, senior Drupal developer um, with uh, Limoen Groen, a Drupal shop based in Amsterdam. And um, as well as being a mentor there, as, as well as being a developer there, as a, I'm a mentor as well uh, for, my, uh, for my colleagues. I have contributed to Drupal 8 core, con Drupal, um, Drupal contract modules, and doing that for many years, uh, over 11 years currently. Um, um, I've been mentoring also at uh, Friday um, uh, uh, first time sprint workshops uh, at Drupal Cons and at local events too. Mark, tell us about you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm, um, my name is Mark van Gent, um, also known as Mark van Gent on Drupal.org, also working for Limoen Groen. I'm an all around Drupal. This Drupal is that, um, from front end to back end and, and teaching to clients. Um, in general, I just like to help people. I do it on, uh, as a mentor on various code sprints, on events. Um, but it also got me in the top 1% on Drupal Answers, for instance. So um, just if there's a question I can answer, I like to answer that. So that brings us to, to really why do we mentor, Eric and I? Um, we, we like to see people grow. That's basically the gist of it all. We like that when you help someone, you, you make a better developer or a better, maybe a better person even. Say, say that after seeing Joe do the keynote. Yeah, we, we, we can help each other become better persons. And it starts a snowball effect. No, no? okay. Um, it can start a snowball effect. You know, when we help people being a better developer or a better um, whatever, they can pay it forward, and, and that starts a snowball effect, which is great if that happens. So, like this? Okay, cool. Hi, come in. Um, so, um, today we're going to um, tell you about a couple of people. They're not real people, they're personas. Um, they're not our real mentees, but um, they're based on our uh, experiences and mentoring people. Um, so these are Suzanne, Fabio, and Tobias. Um, and we're going into a couple of subjects that will uh, be touched upon. Um, we'll talk about learning plans. So what plans can you um, build and how can you create a plan for someone to, um, to learn things? Um, what learning materials can you use in mentoring people? Um, how can you give feedback? And we'll also touch upon a couple of psychological modules, so models. So more the three theory behind it and um, um, just some, some ideas that can help you uh, uh, decide on, on how to create your learning materials and, and how to set up a learning plan. So um, Eric, why don't you tell us about Suzanne? Yes. Um, let's assume Suzanne, um, she's a colleague of you, uh, she is an excellent site builder, she has experience with Drupal 7, and she can write a little bit of Drupal uh, 7 code, but she wants to get better, and she wants to um, work more on Drupal 8 and get better in coding Drupal 8. Um, but for herself, just learning Drupal 8 is a big step, and um, and, and she wants to be uh, she wants to be helped with that. Um, as a way of helping her, as a way of um, structuring, I think it doesn't work. Too bad. Um, as a way of structuring her uh, her, her learning path, um, we decide to make a learning plan for her to the to 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 break the, uh, uh, her her goals uh, down to, to, into concrete steps um, to make, um, uh, to give her um, uh, 
uh, to make it more explicit, what do you mean with uh, getting better in Drupal 8 code? What do you want to learn? Uh, 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 at what time? Um, and to uh, and to help her keep a focus of that. You know, the, the, the daily the daily routine may distract you from your ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a plan to to be better in Drupal 8, but so many Drupal 7 projects. No, make it concrete and and keep focus on that. Those that can be things in which a learning plan can help. Um, keep realistic goals, uh, keep a realistic time period. For example, three months, but if two or six suits you better, it's okay. Um, and try to be concrete, try to include milestones in that plan. Uh, in, 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 in a month from now, you have watched a number of videos, you learn more and then you can define uh, uh, what things she might know at that time. And she can target on that. If it doesn't make it, no problem. Uh, it all depends on the available time and, and, and motivation. And also, if the mentor needs to be supportive, if the mentor needs to provide her or help her finding videos or help her find books, select a book, uh, or, or maybe an, even a course, that can also be tasks for the mentor. You can include those things as well in a learning plan. So sit down with Suzanne, your mentee, um, and discuss what she wants. Uh, it's, it's all about her ideas, not what you or the company wants. Okay, those are, uh, those are important to, to, to remember too, but if she is not motivated, if she doesn't want to go there, there's no chance that she will actually get anywhere at all. So, for example, she wants to learn Drupal 8 basics and she wants to improve her skills um, in getting clearer specs from the customer. It doesn't always have to be technical skills. It can also be social skills, can be communication skills that she wants to learn um, too. And you can focus a learning plan on that. But as a positive th and positive things, uh, Suzanne is very eager to learn, and uh, that's what you can learn during uh, a meeting like that. That she really wants it, and also had a desire to be uh, a real good coder. But on the contrary, a limitation: uh, she has no private time to invest. That's important if you make want to make a realistic plan. <coughs> So breaking the plan down, uh, learning Drupal 8 uh, basics, for example, uh, getting a course or uh, watching videos. Uh, doing code review is another way of learning. You doesn't, um, and she likes to do that too. And she, and, and because that's what she thinks, what she uh, uh, thinks learns best by reading existing code and working with existing stuff instead of making it from the ground up. Everyone has different ways of learning things. Um, for to improve her uh, skills in uh, working with customers, um, we made a plan that she, um, she uh, that she analyzes uh, an event where, where it didn't uh, work out exactly, and she analyzes what can be improved. She can be observed uh, uh, by the mentor, for example, uh, or she can observe others in uh, in discussing uh, these things with the customer. Important to remember that Suzanne is the owner of the plan. It is her plan, her idea, her, her, her ambition. The mentor facilitates in, in her getting there. Uh, make sure you regularly check if she's, uh, what her progress is, whether she needs help, or uh, just asking her uh, how her progress is might also be uh, sufficient. Uh, sufficient support and evaluate the plan and and acknowledge that she learned uh, maybe it's uh, for people it is often uh, yes of course I've learned that but it's a, it's it's an achievement uh, it didn't come from it didn't come easily in in most cases so acknowledge that it is good that she has reached any goal Something, another, another aspect of uh, being a mentor is uh, giving feedback. Um, how do you give feedback? What is, what is a good feedback and what, what, what works, what doesn't work? 
from our experience. Um, for example, um, Suzanne has written code. She had uh, started working on, uh, with Drupal 8. She written uh, pieces of code. You already had given her feedback before, for example, about, um, about code style. Um, and she has written new code. Well, what kind of feedback would you, could you give her or how could you give feedback on uh, her writing the code? Um, how would it be if you told her, uh, thank you for writing the code, but uh, your code style is still not good, uh, uh, it's not performant, you've made uh, too, many, uh, 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 too many complicated uh, actions, it's, oh, it's not safe, and, and you have written duplicate code. If, if you would tell that to someone who has struggled and did her very best to, to write her first code, that's not really motivating. Um, acknowledge that she, <coughs> tell her, well, I see that you have already improved on, on code style, but you can also uh, please note next time this and this. Um, don't overwhelm her with all the feedback. There are plenty of things to learn, but uh, uh, choose your battle, uh, select the most important. For example, um, it, if the code is not safe, start with that as feedback. Um, uh, ask her to um, well, explain her what the problem is, uh, tell her why it is a problem, and then ask her to uh, go back to the code and rework it. Um, and if once it's that, you can give more feedback because there's always things to improve, uh, but don't overwhelm her. Limit the number of uh, items you give feedback on. Do identify not only the problem, but also the options. Um, maybe security is too, too black and white, but um, if there are always several options to choose between, and it is not um, the options to, about the options, it's about how you choose it. it you have, you, you, from your own experience, you may know, well, if you do this, then you run into this problem, and that, you have the other options. Tell those options and tell the consequences of choices. That will make her better in making the choice herself later. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, for myself, yes, I strive for very good code, but you have to stop at some point. And also in giving feedback, stop at some certain point. There's enough to learn in the future as well. Um, about uh, different learning styles, uh, Mark will tell us a bit more about some uh, uh, theories. Yeah, so um, I want to talk a bit about learning styles because I think that learning styles, the, the way that people learn, um, it, it's not the same for everyone. And if you can adjust to the person uh, you're mentoring, um, it will help him or her um, go through the learning process much easier. So um, there's a couple of theories um, by scientists. Uh, one is uh, David Kolb and the other is a couple, uh, Honey and Mumford. Um, and they have been working on, on improving the same model. So um, let's see how it, what they um, taught us. They said, okay, one thing you can, um, uh, distinguish between people is, is how people perceive things. Some people are more what you would call the feel um, uh, uh, people, um, people who like to, to have a concrete experience and don't really think about what it means but are more like um, feeling and, and, and what is it, yeah, how, how do, did I experience this as a whole. On the other side, there are the think uh, people. Um, or more about um, the abstract concepts and, and, and thinking about, okay, so I, I've seen something, but what does it actually mean and how does it work and, and what are the concepts behind it? And then there's also difference in how we process things. Um, some people like to watch. They're like on a distance and, and say, okay, I'll, I'll um, see what happens and then um, draw conclusions from that. And there are other people who like to do and they're active and experimenting and they like to dive right in. So what if we put those on uh, two axes? Um, 
So you got feel on the top and think on the bottom, do on the left, watch on the right. And this is what um, David Kolb calls the learning cycle. So there are four types of learners in each quadrant. On the top left, we've got the activist, someone who likes to um, do stuff and is interested in how it feels in, in the ex experience. Um, on the right side, we've got someone who likes to observe and um, reflect a bit more. We've got a reflector. If you're taking photos, just wait a couple of slides, it will get better even. Um, on the bottom right, you've got the theorist, someone who's watching, um, but not that interested in, in, in the overall experience, but much more in, okay, so what's the theory behind this? And then bottom left, we've got a pragmatist, someone who likes to understand and think about, okay, so how can I apply this knowledge? So it's, it's a more active uh, way of working with the, the, the understanding that you gained. So this is called the learning cycle, and if it's a cycle, whether well, it should be arrows like this. Um, and basically, this is a process that we go through when we learn each and every time. Um, there is always an action to start with. Um, and then you can reflect on it. So did it work? Did it not work? Um, and then you can gain understanding from it. So why did it work or why didn't it work? And um, uh, once you understand it, you can plan and, and make plans for doing it even better next time. So, when you look at learning styles, most people have a tendency to, um, well, I don't want to say get stuck, but they, they, they have a comfort zone in one of these quadrants, or maybe two. Um, so, that means that um, if you are one of the, the learning styles, and then when you arrive at a certain point in that learning cycle, um, there is like, uh, uh, People, people tend to, um, to stop there and, and say, okay, so this is comfortable, Let, let's stop and, and reflect on this uh, for a bit more. Um, and so, when we're looking at Suzanne, um, when talking to her, we found her to be in uh, the top right corner. She's a reflector, you know, she likes to, um, you know, of course she starts doing something, but then, um, uh, take a step back uh, and see what it did, which is great because um, uh, it makes her um, uh, someone who is who's willing to, to look at, at did it work or did it not work. And when you know something or, or see something in your mentee, that helps you and uh, you can give someone uh, assignments or, or tasks that fit her learning style. So for instance, if you're a refractor, it could be, yeah, you, you ask someone to read and edit a working code because it's, it's, um, it's pretty concrete um, and um, it, you don't have to actually go and, and do everything by yourself right away. You can just start and watch and say, okay, so this works and um, um, let's see if I can, can edit a bit and, and hack and uh, see what changes if I, turn this around. For instance, um, we could ask her, okay, so this module has a couple of block plugins, can you add another block plugin to this module? That would be a really concrete assignment for someone who is more re reflector type. And then the next step would be to help her move to the next step in this circle. So from reflecting, we go to understanding. So um, we could ask her, look up documentation, so read about the plugin pattern and um, see what's actually happened when you discovered, when you created this block plugin. Um, so by thinking about it this way, um, it helps us to, um, to get someone moving in this cycle and um, eventually to understand, plan and do it the next time a bit better than the first time. So let's talk about Fabio. Fabio is um, also a, uh, a colleague of the mentor. Um, Fabio is a new colleague. Fabio is, uh, for example, uh, 52 years old. He has plenty of experience, yes, but he has 
experience as a, um, a Flash and ActionScript programmer, so no PHP and no Drupal experience at all. Uh, but he does want to be a developer, a Drupal developer. That's what he is hired for. Um, But Fabio doesn't have any Drupal knowledge, so there's a large uh, 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 um, uh, a large chunk of, of, of information that he has to, to take before he can actually start working and start being productive on projects. And the learning path for everyone varies much on the situation where you come from, what your starting knowledge is, uh, where you want to go, and uh, what your skills are in, in learning and absorbing the information. Um, what is often needed in this first period is structure. Um, it, is, it is, if you're working on project, you have very concrete things to work on, but if you cannot be productive on projects yet, you need, do need some structure to, to, to learn from, to learn with. Um, you can need to learn maybe both technical and soft skills. For example, you have to learn in, uh, to work in an agile team. If you're used to uh, other project management systems, you do need to know and understand uh, what agile projects uh, are about. And if you are working on projects with limited skills, make sure the tasks are limited too. Don't throw someone in the deep on a project, just give them a simple, uh, simple task that matches their skills. For Fabio, we decided to um, make learning materials for, to give him the structure in his first learning month. And I developed, um, from various experience, I developed uh, learn, uh, materials with these um, four uh, steps in for each, for each exercise. For example, you have an exercise about um, making a content type and adding fields to it. Then the, this exercise, uh, which may, might take someone um, a, a few hours, let's say four hours to, to work on, and if it's first, and maybe even eight hours if you're doing it very, very first time and don't know what content types and fields are. Um, we've broken this task down in, in four things. In the introduction, in which you tell them um, uh, this is what it's about. You're going to make a, 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 news, a news section on the site, and you have to have content uh, which pages which contain the news, etc. And also what you learn, uh, you will learn about content types, you will learn about fields and uh, view modes, for example. Then the tasks, break down the work into several tasks. Someone doesn't know how to approach it, maybe. How do you, uh, what choices do you make? Uh, what steps do you take to get there to a content type with fields? Give them sources of knowledge. Um, list, for example, a number of videos on the internet. Um, maybe there's a book, uh, etc. Or if it's more specialized knowledge, or if it's in-company knowledge, like how you uh, approach a project, uh, what, how you work with Git uh, within uh, the company, those sources can be internal sources, like a wiki page. And with the exercise, include um, questions questions for people to answer themselves, but also if you hand over this exercise to another colleague, an, an, a, media, uh, a media site builder who can help the, uh, Fabio here, um, they have a number of questions they can ask. Oh yes, yes, of course, I have to ask them uh, and check and tell them about naming fields. How do we name, uh, how, what naming conventions do we use for fields? All those kinds of things can be uh, as, as notes or questions included in this exercise. In making these exercises, I've been trying to balance time to invest in an exercise and time it takes for someone to, um, to carry out the exercise. If you make a full course, you might take up to 20, uh, 20 times as much time it takes to carry out. If it takes a day to carry out, it might take you 20 days to make a full-blown uh, course materials. But 
with making these exercises, it's about making it in this way with limited instructions, but exter and external sources. It might do, take you up about one day to make this exercise and m correct it uh, later with his experience. It takes about one day to make it if it takes him one day to, uh, to, to, to do it. Or maybe even less, maybe the initial one takes you uh, only an hour or two. Other um, possible uh, learning materials are uh, simpler uh, and more, maybe more dedicated uh, tasks like exercises working with Drupal 8 uh, entities if you're writing code. Uh, it's a task that as a developer you have to do very often and uh, the material on the internet is fairly scattered um, and then it helps if you write down a number of exercises like uh, uh, creating a node or, or loading an, an, an entity or loading all entities or querying, or, etc. Simple exercises, writing down them and um, uh, will give structure for someone learning to code, in this case Drupal 8 entities. Another way of giving them exercises is go out, go to your colleagues and ask them, for example, the favorite brush command, or ask them how they name fields. Uh, those kinds of exercises are fairly simple to, to, to come up with, and it helps them to go out in, uh, to their colleagues. It, it might be difficult for them at first, and an exercise might be a good excuse. Well, I've been asked, I got this exercise here, can you tell me, etc. That helps them to go out, that helps them to move away from the desk at times, and um, uh, brings them into contact, and at the same time learns them and gives them structure for learning. And thing to keep in mind when making these exercises and also in learning in general is a few things to help, as I said, to help your brain. Your brain is, our brain and your brain is an associative thing. It, it remembers things by its relations. Uh, and, and by connecting to existing knowledge, even connecting to non-existing knowledge, you can ask yourself, what is a content type? What can I do with a content type? How do I make a content type? Where can it be used for? How do, etc. Those questions is already a way starting to learn. Writing down your questions about things you don't know is already a way to start learning. And it is connects to the last one, to be curious. Yeah, content types. Let's Google it. Oh, content types, Drupal. And then you find some things. And then you, you, you start building a knowledge tree. And out on a tree, you can connect more knowledge to it. Remember that. Uh, in technical terms, in, in uh, 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 internet terms, upload is the bottleneck. Um, getting things in your memory is, is hard. Uh, it helps them to reduce it to its essence. Making models, making uh, uh, graphical structures like you just saw from the, um, from the psychological module. Those kinds of things reduce it to its essence. You probably still remember that one with the, the arrows going around. That's because it was a simple model, not all the words you remember, but just a simple thing. That's now in your memory. You remember that because you reduced it. It was reduced to its essence. Repetition, practice, practice over time as well, and use motivation. I'm getting more and more convinced how your their personal motivation in this case for Fabio how important, if he is motivated, he, if he really does want to learn something, he will get there one way or another. To make it a bit more concrete with Fabio, for example, he wants to add images to the content. He, he now knows about the content type, he knows about an image field, but he didn't do it before, and he asked your help. How would you start helping him? Well, for example, you can say, oh, images, uh, don't use image field, you should use responsive images. That's much better, because responsive images, blah, 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 blah. 
you didn't answer his question. He still doesn't know how, uh, you might be right, but he still doesn't know how to add images. Another way of helping him would be, oh yeah, let me do it. Click, 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 click. Then, now you have your image. See how easy it is? Yeah, uh, but I still don't know how to do it myself. I, st I can't remember it. It went so fast. When giving answers, be careful uh, with giving complete, complete solutions. It's about helping someone to learn, not helping to fix the task at hand. Maybe sometimes it is, but if it's about learning, um, hold yourself back, explain them, give them the information to do the next step. Let them do it themselves, for example. Think out loud, do explain him about images and responsive images, um, and if you're deciding if you're uh, wondering which of the two fits best in the situation, explain them why you think and what consequences you thought of in this process of deciding between them. And summarize your concept. Once it's done, uh, that's great, good, now you have your image, but think back and talk out loud which steps you took. Okay, we had this field and we selected it, blah, 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 blah etc. All those steps, repeat the steps again or uh, summarize a concept. Those kinds of things help someone to learn. Remember, don't give them the fish, teach them to fish. Um, to look back at Fabio and to uh, see how that fits in the learning uh, circle Mike explained. Yeah, so when you're mentoring someone, um, it's, it's really important to observe the person and, and get them to know because your relation with the mentee is growing as well. And while we were helping Fabio and mentoring him, it turned out that he's really in the bottom quadrant. The theorist likes to read and keep reading until he feels like he knows everything, which in one way is great. I mean good understanding of what you're actually doing and can be really helpful. But it also means that we sometimes have to help him say, okay, let's, let's get out of the reading mode and get into the, the, the doing mode. Stop watching, start doing. Um, so for instance, Fabio would start watching a video, um, for instance, about entities and entity reference. Now, the next step would be to apply it in a concrete plan work out a content model. So suppose we have this site we're building, um, which entities would you choose and, and, and how would you set up those entity references? Those exercises can help um, move him from one quadrant to the other and, and get the whole uh, learning cycle going. So let's have a look in more detail about how learning works. Um, Learning is usually a pattern of action and reaction. You do something and there is a result coming from that. So um, this is sometimes described as uh, uh, three types of learning. There are single, double and triple loop learning. Um, and also has to do with the, way, the fact that uh, your mentees may have short term tasks, things they want to accomplish. Um, Medium-term goals, things they want to achieve in, in a slightly longer time period. And eventually there are the long-term beliefs, the, the things that we think are right, the, the person we are. Um, in single loop learning, it's basically about actions having a result. In a really simple example, um, you pick up something that's really hot, um, you burn your fingers and you get feedback. It's really immediate feedback. Okay, you know, I shouldn't do this. That is single loop learning. The result influences the rules, so to speak, the rules that you have in your head about what you should do and what you should not do. So, okay, I should not pick up this glass because it's really hot. There, you have, you've learned something. In single loop learning, the feedback changes what we do. But there's something behind that, and that's what we call the mental model. That's like our idea of how the world works. 
Um, and when you go and, and try to influence that, um, that's what we call double loop learning. It's not about, well, you shouldn't do that. Okay, I will do something else next time. No, it's about understanding what's happening. Okay, so there are cold things and hot things, and hot things in general might burn my fingers. So, um, you know, there's, it, it changes the mental model. So when, while single loop learning is really about those short term tasks we're talking about, double loop learning is much more about, so why are we doing things? It's, it's about the, the medium term goals. Short term tasks are probably pretty easy to do. So, okay, you click here, click there. Okay, you learn something. Um, the double loop learning is also, okay, you can teach people about, okay, so why do we click here? So why does Drupal work the way Drupal works? And sometimes, but not always, you get into the triple loop learning. Um, so you can actually take a step back even further. And okay, so, so Drupal works the way it does. And what does it mean that it's open source, for instance? Why do we believe that it's better to do this as a community instead of all writing our own CMS? Things like that are really about the beliefs. And um, in triple loop learning, so the feedback really changes who we are. Now, when you give feedback or when you start mentoring someone, um, think about this and choose the right level. Um, so, for instance, do explain to Suzanne why we submit patches. So, not just, okay, you click here and make a git diff and you submit it. No, explain why and it will change her mental model. On the other hand, I once made a mistake about teaching content editors um, why hacking core is bad and they really weren't interested. So, I was aiming at the, the, the triple loop and it just didn't work. And, I, and of course it didn't work. I mean, it was not something they needed and something they wanted. So, um, yeah, choose and, and think about the right level um, to make this uh, uh, as effective as you can be. We have a third persona for you, and that's Tobias. Tobias attends the first time Sprinter workshop tomorrow here in DrupalCon Vienna. And some of you may be planning uh, to mentor there uh, too. Um, Tobias is, um, you estimate him somewhere in his early 20s. Um, you want to get to know him. That helps if being a mentor on the Friday Sprint. Um, so you have a short, you have a chat with him, you ask him where he comes from, what he'd done, uh, how he came to DrupalCon, uh, how you heard about it, etc. You introduce yourself and you introduce Tobias to the other people on the table. Being part of a group is part of being in a community, uh, helping each other helps them to um, to stay motivated or uh, perhaps they don't, they can't do it themselves and you're not available, other people can help him too. So introduce the people around um, Tobias. And do ask questions about what they can and what they like. Motivation was one of the things that we're aiming for. What does he like to do? Does he have any special interests in uh, what he's going to work on, for what he's going to work on? Working on tasks, remember that the easy tasks they have, we give them to do are very hard. They have a lot more than um, reviewing a patch. They have a lot more than making a, to do than making a screenshot. Maybe one of the simple things, perhaps. But even those are hard, they have a lot of things to do. They know, need to know about the tools, need to know about the procedures, uh, how to, what to do on, in the issue queue. Is it okay if I are to be see it or sh when I don't know anything about this, uh, am I the right person to do it? Those kinds of things are hard for people and that's okay. But, um, so easy tasks might seem uh, an easy screenshot, that's too easy for me. I want to do coding. Tell them, explain them why they still, why it's a good idea to do this easy, the so-called easy task. 
and core is intimidating. I did do years of work in Contrib before I dared to do something in core. Core is the big thing. Core is very complex and very large, and I don't cannot touch something, and then it might fall or fall, fall break down. Break down. Um, Yes, that's true, but also in core there are plenty of tasks which are overseeable, which do match their skills. Um, and on the other hand, it is quite a, 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 a big thing to, if you are able to contribute to core and be there as a mentor to help those people through the process and give them the assurance that you will be there to help them. If you are helping Tobias, again, that's what I said with Fabio, try to, be, try to do it hands-off. Try to um, watch what she's doing, uh, hear what he's telling to the people around her or asking him. Watch with your ears, your eyes, but also with your heart. They're human beings, you're too. They're scared, they are nervous, they, I don't know what they are, but learn them, learn from them. And do give compliments. Uh, every achievement can be worth a compliment. There's always positive things to, to do. And it gives a good feeling. And that's also an important thing about mentoring, giving someone a good feeling, give him the conf which gives them the confidence to carry on. Um, acknowledge that you don't know everything. Of course, there are so many things to know. Um, you can't know everything. And if you can admit that you don't know uh, all the answers, and maybe it, uh, that gives him, okay, uh, he's only human, and he's not, uh, not a superhero. And you might use it as an excuse, okay, I don't know the answer, but I do know the person who knows it. Let's go. And uh, get someone out in the group of people and find that, that one person who they interacted with in the SUQ, and meet them in life in real person that's also very um, very positive it scared at first perhaps but you are there to help them so a way you find ways to introduce them to people in the greater community um, be the swimming instructor for this person let him swim uh, it's okay to go under once in a while but keep an eye on him so that he doesn't drown. Tobias is um, one of the people who likes to start coding immediately. He skips reading. Um, he makes assumptions about the problem. The issue queue, he doesn't read all the stories, just scans over it. Oh, yeah, I think I, th I know the problem. I know the solution as well. That's good. He's enthusiastic. That's a positive thing. He has to keep that enthusiasm. But making him aware of his behavior. So reflect. He's doing things. Reflect on what he's doing. You have made this, this code. Very good. Thanks for working on it. However, did you really read it? Because I got the idea that it might not be the suitable solution here. Make him aware of the problem, make him aware of yeah, the problem first, and then make him aware of the consequences. If you read something, you don't read something, that you might uh, fix a prof problem that doesn't exist. And uh, explain him next as uh, leading into a new action, explain him how you would approach it, that you Admit maybe that you also don't read the full issue queue, but you do read a bit more. And what do you read? Yes, you read the issue summary and then tell him the steps you go through. And then he's ready to go full circle and go back to his code and start working and rework his issue. Right, so like Eric said, um, we're observing Tobias in the sprint and saw that he likes to start coding immediately. Well, that that's clearly puts him into the top left corner. He's an activist. He likes to go in and, and do and experience and see how it works. I see you. 
checking your watch. Are we okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, that's cool, and especially in uh, a code sprint uh, situation where you only have one day, um, you really want to help Tobias to have the whole cycle from starting to do something and uh, reflecting, understanding, and, and celebrating success at the end. Uh, you want to wrap it in a whole day. That's really different than, for instance, Suzanne, where we can um, spend three months with our colleague. So, given that Tobias is this activist uh, learning type, um, there's plenty to do for him. Um, can be fixing a bug, coding. Um, it could also be other things like testing a patch in the queue or, um, uh, uh, well, for instance, like a test that was added. Um, there's enough to do um, that's like really actionable right away. And then after that, you might want to help him uh, take the next step and get moving in the learning cycle. So um, ask him, do you understand the solution? Uh, what would you do next? Um, do you think this is the best solution or um, uh, could we make it more generic so we fix many things all at once? Those reflection kind of questions um, can help him moving and uh, start understanding what's happening and why certain choices and certain decisions are made. So, wrapping up, if you look at Suzanne, Fabio, and Tobias, um, we can really see that no two mentorships are the same. No two mentees are the same. And um, we've experienced that this is one of the most important things to acknowledge right away and um, look at the person in front of you. And um, when you have uh, created exercises or, or when you, once you have been successful in mentoring someone once, don't assume that it's going to work every time. So keep observing. Um, you have to adapt to the skills of someone. Um, you have to adapt to the, the time available, to, to the learning style, as we've shown. Um, and all those things, um, it, it's, it, it's much easier to do that when you really get to know the mentee. Um, and finally, so yeah, m use their motivation when you hook into the thing that drives people to the things that make someone happy. Um, it's so much easier to, to get going. So if someone likes music, um, don't ask them to build a recipe site. Ask them to build uh, a catalog for their music collection. Just a simple change in an exercise can make a whole lot of difference. Right. So. That about wraps it up. I hope you um, are enthusiastic about being a mentor, about being a better mentor, maybe even mentoring yourself tomorrow. There are cont contribution sprints. Um, and whether you're either going there as a developer or going there as a mentor, or um, maybe even both, um, yeah, we hope that this um, uh, helped you uh, help other people even better than you're perhaps already doing. So finally, um, we'd like to know, are there any questions or maybe there are experiences about mentoring yourself because you've been all watching, so maybe it's time to start doing something. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks for talk, but I just want to give you some feedback at the moment and then share my experience and ask a question. Uh, during the talk, I had a thought and the feeling that this presentation not about how to be a better mentor, but how to be just a mentor. Because uh, it was about planning, mentorship, how to work with the people, which mm -hmm are going to be mentee. But what to do with the people which uh, perceive mentorship as a personal offense? Because probably you can be in a situation when the other human don't 
feel uh, full 100% respect for you, but you need to be a mentor for these people because uh, not anyone will respect you, not everyone will respect you in 100% of cases. How to work with these people? Good question. Um, I I've personally haven't had that experience, maybe. Okay. So, okay, so no personal experience here. Um, what I think is, is um, uh, you would probably have to take a step back, because um, if in such a situation, um, the person doesn't want to be a, men a mentee, he doesn't want to be mentored, um, then I would ask, so, so who decided that the mentoring is needed in the first place? Um, because obviously it wasn't the mentee uh, himself. Um, so you would probably look at, um, so, so what is actually the, the need here? So, so if someone else feels the need for that person to be mentored and to to learn more, then um, yeah, you would have to try and convince the person that there is something to learn first um, before you even can can start mentoring, because otherwise it's it's going to be a clash, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm you thinking, want, uh, and usually the easiest way is just to fire people and to hire new ones which will respect you and will be a good mentee and you will just teach them and everything will be okay. But currently I'm facing a lot of cases when people feel in some scare when you are trying to teach them some, something. You're giving the, your knowledge to them, but they are just don't want to take this knowledge. They're thinking just that they are already a good developers and just they don't want to perceive anything. And I'm trying to find a path to this sort of people, how to teach them. And currently I don't have the answer for this question, that's why I'm asking it. Probably yeah, yeah. you have it. Um, it is very hard if someone is not motivated yeah. to learn something new. Um, and if they are Maybe they have the first experience that um, how it how it can be if they do know more. Um, I would I would going to search for their motivation. Do they is is this all in life they want? And maybe maybe they come to the conclusion that they don't want to be a developer or, or whatever they are doing at the moment. Um, there is apparently something something blocking them from from following you because they don't want to go there. I would I would certainly do, in some way do a step back and and uh, see what what is behind this 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 blocking thing. What is keeping them from from accepting uh, that they uh, that uh, yeah then it's good and, and and yeah from accepting that it's good to 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 learn and to improve. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I think being a better mentor, it, I, I can say that I will be a better mentor when I will overcome this and will give some, I don't know. Yeah. So there's, there's one thing I would like to add, um, when I, one thought um, that might help. Um, you know, when, when someone's really um, offended by the fact that you're trying to mentor him or, or, or teaching something, that's, um, I'm assuming, uh, has something to do with, with status as well. Like, you feel like you're, uh, you're uh, a good developer, and if someone can teach me something, that tells me something about how good I am. So it makes you better than me. Mm -hmm. All right. If, if, if you're my mentor, that must, must say something about me. So that's, that's like maybe the, the, the thing you want to, um, to turn around. And um, if you can make someone on the, your same level, uh, mentoring might be easier for that person. So one thing you could do to achieve that is um, to introduce uh, peer reviews, code reviews in your company. So um, let him review your code and you review his code and you might learn something from each other and um, you will be much more on the same level uh, which would make it 
might make it easier for such a person to um, accept something um, that you're telling him because uh, he's not below you, but you're on the same same level. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, and I'm trying to bring the circular code review when even juniors reviews your code. You, of course, review reviewing the code of juniors, and that's uh, how you can teach them. And when they are reviewing your code, I mean junior developers or mentees, they can learn something new from your code. Yeah. They can uh, learn the style you are writing it. They can learn some patterns, ask a question, and etc. Anyway, thank you. Thank okay, you. welcome. I saw another question over there. Yeah. No, that's not. Uh, please, uh, okay. please come to the microphone, please. I just uh, wanted to add on this matter we discussed uh, that maybe the generic uh, culture of the company that uh, tries to motivate people to become even better helps on situations like that and to just don't fire people who doesn't know something. Yeah, true. Yeah, company, company culture is, is really important in this. Um, sometimes you see uh, companies where um, um, people are really um, like judged on what they do, so they have to, or, or at least feel like they have to keep up the appearance of being uh, a flawless coder, um, because otherwise it might influence their their rating, their bonus, their whatever. Um, so yeah, I think if you can create a company culture where learning and admitting that you don't know everything is, is part of, of how you work, that works. My previous employer, we had a stand-up every day before lunch. So um, instead of sitting down, um, we had a stand up, and everyone had like two, <laughs> half a minute to say, okay, I'm stuck at this. Uh, did anyone ever see this bug? Um, I can't figure this out. Um, and it was a great way to share knowledge. And we all saw that, that no one knows everything. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add, uh, I think there's, you, know, you can get blur the line between you know, there's coaching, there's mentoring, there's teaching, and um, at our company we, we have a program as well, uh, it's called the Unleash program, where before I joined, before I started, I, w I was also a bit apprehensive, I was like, you know, what, um, you know, I don't really want to be taught things, I uh, had the same sort of attitude perhaps, uh, but what we do and what's helped me is that, yeah, we really set our own goals, so it sounds like perhaps the company is forcing these people to to join this program, uh, and they might not want to learn particular things, uh, but what we've done and what I've enjoyed is, you know, we set our own goals, we set our own things that we want to learn. Um, so the mentoring's not really necessarily giving us a path and saying, okay, do this course, do that, but what do you want to learn, what do you want to improve? Set your own, um, your own goals and find your own way to achieve them. Um, so maybe that's something that can help in, uh, in your situation. Sure. Great tip, okay, thanks. So which company is it? Uh, X, X team. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, was one my question? Just right. So okay. Smart. Almost out of time. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Simon from Becker Um I, I wanted to um, to add a thing. Um, you had these personas and the learning cycle, and um, you placed the personas uh, in the learning cycle. But and I wanted to add that as a mentor, you too had. Uh, um, are a persona in this learning cycle and there's always a way from one persona to talk to another to, to, to know their motivation and it's very important for a mentor to keep in mind uh, what type of persona you are to, to, to reach the, the other personas in the, um, um, in yeah. the learning cycle. Absolutely, if and you know yourself you, you can help to solve such problems like uh, if there is motivation, sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, completely right, yeah. So, thanks. Um, Thank you very much. Um, don't forget to, uh, to evaluate the session and um, I wish you a good stay here at DrupalCon and tomorrow, of course, during the sprint on Friday.